So we were in between albums. We had just done, I think we were in between Born to Sing and just starting to record. Oh, you, you did the oh. um, EP, which was, um, I, and I don't know why I skipped that. So before we go to Don't Let Go, because the EP, That's okay. the EP with um, Runaway, Runaway Love. Love, powerful to say, it was such, such a such a beautiful, such a beautiful track. Isn't that great? Oh my gosh, thank it, you. It, yeah, the organ, it was such a, I did, who, who the hell was off F-Mob? Because I never saw them in the video. Were, were they just the producers? F-Mob were, yeah, they were in the, in the video as well. Um, yeah, Foster we, McElroy. Oh, but that's the, so them. F, yeah, the F-Mob was there. So before they signed En Vogue, they had a five-act deal with Sylvia Rome. And they came up with a girl, a girl and a guy um, uh, duo. Uh, they were rappers. They had a solo female, a solo male, and they had us as a group. And then they had somebody else, I forgot. Maybe a male, a male uh, rapper just by himself. I don't know, <laughs> or a male R and B singer. But yeah, no, they had one of those, and they had a female. So um, we were the only ones out of that five act deal that was successful the way we were. Um, and they did an album called F Mob Squared. On that album is "Got to Be a Better Way" that they did, and we sang background. And then I think "Strange" is on there as well. It really isn't clear what, what you know. We were yeah, talking the Queen's, English accent. Yeah, yeah Queen's English. Uh, we thought we were. We weren't that good. But, um, and so those two songs were on that album. Got to be a better way and strange. And then, uh, and then we then we came up with our own album. So it was a way for them to introduce all their artists on one album. You know, okay. and so that was so. F Mob was um, uh, they did. They did uh, Runaway Love. Okay. And it was just Denny, Denny and Tommy. That, that was one of their other names was uh, F-Mob. Okay. But oh, Foster okay. McElroy. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, but it also marked a change from, it was smoother. So it's almost moved into the sense that you were still keeping that mainstream stuff. And then you did the song with um, Salt and Pepper, which was, you know, the Waterman yes. that you both had on, 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 your, on your album and stuff. <laughs> So as I said, it was like you guys were just growing and going bigger and, and bigger. But again, even even what a man was written by Herbie Lovebug. That wasn't Denny and Tommy. So I started I started giving like I brought uh, we were at rehearsal, and I brought an article on Salt and Pepper. I think it was um, XXX Magazine or Source Magazine, one of those uh, hip hop magazines. Mm. And I brought the interview to the girls and I was like, you guys have to read this. Like Salt and Pepper took back their rights um, from their producer and they fought for their rights so that they can um, have more control over their careers. They took their careers in their hands and they walked away from Herbie Lovebug. Um, and he was like, well, you guys can't produce your own songs. I'm the one who writes your hits for you. And they wrote their biggest, their biggest hit, which was, um, uh, was it Shoop? Not Shoop, no, just before that, it was um, Express Yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they wrote Express Yourself with Al Herbie. And it was like, what are you saying? We can do this on our own. So they took charge of their lives. And that's all I wanted the girls to know. Like, we, we can do the same thing. We deserve this. And um, none of them wanted to hear me. Uh, I left rehearsal. We went to lunch. The magazine sat on the piano. We came back from lunch. We finished rehearsing for another three hours and we left rehearsal and the magazine still sat on the piano and I took it home with me. Yeah.